BioBalance HealthCast, episode 186, Testosterone Replacement Headlines, Can They Be Trusted? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week, Kathy and I are continuing a conversation that we have regularly, which is a diatribe that, that I have against poor journalism. Uh, <laughs> there was an article in this week's Post-Dispatch on the editorial page that was written by a professor, a cardiologist, at Washington University here in St. Louis, which is one of the renowned premier hospitals in the United States. And so the professors there have quite a lot of status. And this gentleman, uh, Dr. Andrew Cates, wrote an article, and the title of the article was Adding Testosterone may offer risks and few benefits. And the, if you read the article carefully, uh, basically what Dr. Cates is saying is some people are for it, some people are against it. I recommend <laughs> caution. That's that's the substance of his conclusion. Like no opinion, basically. Uh, well, just An go opinion. slow. Maybe it'll help, maybe it won't help, just go slow. But in the context of the article, he mentions repeatedly Major studies say this, studies say that, this study said that, and he doesn't identify any of the studies. For right. instance, one and study... And he misrepresents the studies as well. Or the study itself has been misrepresented. We'll talk right. about one in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, he makes a reference to a study uh, looking into the benefit of hormone replacement for women in terms mm-hmm. of cardiovascular issues because he's a cardio doctor. Cardiologist. Uh, and he says there was a study in which 27,000 women chosen at random received either hormone replacement uh, or a placebo. And at the end of the day, it didn't show any any gain in terms of cardio. No, it did. He says that it caused more, cardi- it caused more cardiovascular events. A higher rate of cardiovascular events, events in the group that received the hormones. Right. But this is overgeneralization again. And what studies are you referencing? If he's referencing the Women's Health Initiative of two thousand one, that was tw- that was the number in that I mean, was the number that of women. Seems to be the same study. It seems to be. We're we're assuming that is uh-huh. because the numbers match with the research. It's hard we've to done. rebut rebut have a rebuttal for somebody data. when they just throw out stuff that doesn't specify what study it is. Yeah. But that <laughs> study has been aggressively discredited worldwide, and yet many physicians are still out there because they were. It, it was recent enough that that. In their educational flow, they were trained that mm-hmm. this is the answer. Mm-hmm. That has been rejected, and they're still they haven't updated their database. Right, and, and they don't they don't really want it. I mean, they don't have time. I mean, I have compassion for them because they are busy. They don't have time sure. to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But I'm telling you, we've re- investigated it, and I read the study when it came out, eleven or twelve mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. And it what it said that estrogen and provera caused a higher rate of heart disease, right. but Estrogen alone, which is what people consider a hormone, and that's when you just say hormones, there's hundreds, now becoming more than hundreds of hormones in right. the body. So the, the hormone they're talking about is estrogen. The estrogen part of that study had less heart attacks, less strokes. So by saying that, that generalization that hormones cause heart attacks and strokes right. is ridiculous, and it's bad. It's both bad journalism and and bad medical advice, especially if you're going to be in a newspaper. Because what happens is the common man, the average public, reads the headlines. And, and even some doctors and they read the headlines co- and they experts. say, all right, I want to change my medical treatment based on the scary headline I just read mm-hmm. that says if I get my hormones replaced, woman, that I'm going to get breast cancer or have a heart attack. Right. And, and actually, if you're interested, we have done podcasts, and you can go back to our website and, and find the titles for those specifically dealing with the Women's Health Initiative and all of the misinformation and disinformation that's in it. Uh, We also have done a podcast on a recent study from England or from Europe that says uh, some thousands, 27, I believe, if my memory serves me right, thousand women are believed to have died as a result of changing their treatment protocols in response to the fear-mongering of the Women's Health Initiative. They stopped taking estrogen. They stopped taking estrogen. And then that increased their risk of death, and and they died. The, this study is suggesting those women would not have died if they've maintained their treatment regimen. Mm-hmm. So the reason this is important is further in the article, he gets to the, the main gist of what he's saying, which is about uh, the movement, the uh, media advertising, the 
big buzz in medicine today is about replacing the hormone testosterone. And he's saying all these benefits are claimed for testosterone. And his particular focus of concern is about uh, the attenuating risks of heart disease. And so he yeah. says there is some. there are some who say replacing testosterone will lower your chance of heart disease. Mm -hmm. There are some that say, oh, it'll increase your chance of heart disease. Mm -hmm. And he quotes a study. But he doesn't identify the study. But we uh, we think we know which study it is. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the Women's Health Initiative. It's misrepresented. It's uh, been It was published in JAMA, uh, the Journal of American Medical Association. Which is like the Bible for which doctors. Which is like the Bible. And, and in, again, November, in November of 2013. Right. And it it's is, been modified twice already right. in response to complaints about the uh, statistical data manipulation and the uh, database of the study itself. The numbers are wrong. Yes. They quoted the numbers wrong. Then they com computed the risk improperly. I mean, everything about this study, it, it was called Association of Testosterone Therapy with Mortality, Myocardial Infarction, and Stroke in Men with Low Testosterone Levels. So... But what it doesn't say in the title, and this is what people read, they read that and it said, oh my gosh, these people experienced an increase in heart attacks in the first 90 days uh, after but, they replaced testosterone. Mm -hmm. But the men that they selected for this data were elderly retired veterans in veterans hospitals. And interestingly enough, 10% of the men in the study were women. <laughs> so it was wrong. Yeah, they had they had the wrong sex, ten. the wrong numbers, and they computed it improperly. So in response to that study, everyone I know has said, oh, my gosh, testosterone's terrible. I mean, I get calls at the office. Should I go off my testosterone because of this study? Well, it was a terrible study, and it and it is the one, one study. There's another study that's similar, misrepresented, and a small number of people, not like not for the same mm -hmm. reasons, but it's it's not an accurate study. But there were hundreds, thousands of studies before that said testosterone is a benefit to men. Right. Men who have low testosterone <laughs> levels, and as they age, they benefit in many ways. They benefit by decreasing Alzheimer's. They benefit by decreasing their risk of heart attack and stroke. They decrease the risk of DVT. They decrease, not increase, decrease the risk of DVT. They decrease their their risk of autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. In fact, in last month's Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, just in April of 2014. April the 5th. April the 5th of 2014, we have three articles that state that replacing testosterone in hypogonadal, which means men who make l low testosterone levels, men actually one, decreases mortality in that entire group. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, decreases, or excuse me, decreases osteoporosis and increases bone mass. And the other was it decreases their risk of getting rheumatoid arthritis. So, so all of these things, I mean, if mortality is decreased overall, mm -hmm. and the mortality that kills men over 60, that the cause of mortality is heart disease, right? then... These three studies in the most recent journal of endocrinology fly in the face of this very bad study that was in JAMA. So, well, and, and another thing that you can't doesn't get mentioned this. is the men in the study already had histories of heart attacks and strokes. Okay, the the study from JAMA that was wrong. Right, that was wrong. Right, uh, or for which the data was misinterpreted. As a matter of fact, in the endocrine journal in April. Uh, the, the man who is quoted is Abraham Morgan Thaler of Harvard, not WashU. Yes. <laughs> uh, who is the recognized expert generally about testosterone related for issues for men. Mm -hmm. And what he says, uh, or uh, he recalculated the data, went down in the weeds of all the statistics and figured it out. And he wrote to JAMA and said, You've misunderstood or misinterpreted this data. Or misrepresented. It is wrong. He said 10% of the study participants are women, not men, and an error rate of 89% in the statistical data for over 1,000 individuals in the study is wrong. So 89% of the data for Basically, these... Basically, sounds like it was just Sounds like up. they... Yeah. <laughs> they, made the, they tried to make the data fit what they wanted to say. So, I'm so, not... That may not have been their intent. 
But that's what it appears to be to me. Well, exactly. And we just got back from a conference in May in Orlando, Florida, of uh, doctors that that where you gave a presentation. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Morgan Thaler was there, and we actually had a chance to have a conversation with him, and we attended a couple of his presentations. And he is disturbed enough that he has written and asked JAMA to retract this article, which is almost never done, uh, that mm -hmm. they don't do that. And once the news got out that he had written this challenging response saying your data is wrong, your statistics are wrong, your subset population is wrong, this article is bad primarily because people read the headline, oh, testosterone replacement causes heart attacks, mm -hmm. and they get scared and they change their treatment. And for many individuals, testosterone replacement is a life-saving treatment. That's right. That, so. that reduces diabetes that increases muscle mass, that increases libido, that increases satisfaction with life, and that does not cause cancer or heart attacks. Right. So it's a life-saving treatment protocol for so many men, and, and not just elderly veterans in VA hospitals who, who are already sick had heart and attacks. And might be women. <laughs> and might be women. <laughs> who knew? Uh, so he wrote that article, and in response, worldwide, now from the, the, people have been contacting him saying, I want to sign on to a petition that we'll send to JAMA and ask them to retract that article, because JAMA almost never retracts right. an article once right. it's published. And so now over 3,000 specialists in 24 countries, without being asked to, have spontaneously signed mm -hmm. a, peti a petition and sent it to JAMA saying, please retract this article. In, in this in urology and endocrinology and general medicine, all of these specialists are, are I mean, they're well qualified. In medicine, we have the advantage. We aren't just reading a study. We're also reading a study, and then we compare it to everything we've seen in the past. What, to your practice. To, to the people practice. that walk in the door. People that we actually see and see how they do and watch them get better with testosterone. Mm -hmm. So this this we have an advantage if we're really looking and we're actually looking at a lot of people who do have testosterone replacement watch them get better oh, i forgot di diabetes right decreases the risk of diabetes one of the biggest diseases that we have right now that is right. is afflicting everybody over 40 almost because we're all addicted to corn syrup yep and which is a whole other conversation and <laughs> chips and dip exactly and football no i'm just yeah. sorry just kidding um in any case the um, we we measure whatever is written to what we see, so that's our advantage. So what we see in a study, oftentimes I'll read a study and I'll go, well, I'm not sure exactly why that's wrong, and it may be right in um, Scandinavia where they did this study where they had a hundred people in Scandinavia, mm -hmm. but it's not right for my population because I know that that doesn't happen in my population. Well, and that's a significant thing. So people thing. reading the reading. The newspaper, and I don't. I don't want to discount being educated because here, that's what we're trying to do here. Well, and I don't want to be disrespectful to Dr. Cates because I think he's trying to say the same thing we are. He which may is, have said, "Be careful." Something. Look different at the with, information. Than what they wrote talk to. to your physician, mm -hmm. and and make a, a decision based on your interpretation or your physician's interpretation of the cost-benefit ratio for any treatment, which is what you should always do. Don't be a passive receptor of whatever somebody with the title doctor says. Oh, do this. Right. I mean, talk to them, read about it. Uh, ask them what they've read about it. What do you know about this? Uh, and and make a decision as an informed participant because it's your health, it's your body, it's your life. It's very hard for the for the normal person. It's very hard for doctors to, to look at information and actually put it all together and decide what's really right. Because just for example, way back when, when I was first in practice in the 80s, they came out and said, Jour Journal of the AMA said, vitamin E helps prevent breast cysts so it makes it easier for doctors to actually diagnose breast cancer so every woman should be taking 400 unit MIUs of vitamin E. So that that was like, I told everybody to do that. And it did work I, because palpably, when I had to do breast exams on everyone, their cysts decreased. Mm -hmm. I mean, they I could feel that their cysts were decreasing. Fibrocystic changes went down and their mammograms looked clearer so we could see a, a cancer easier. So, so we're doing this for about 10 years, and then all of a sudden, headline, which I didn't really investigate this study too much. Headline comes out and says, vitamin E causes heart disease. Who knew? Right. So I look at that study, and I'm thinking breast cancer or breast cancer 
not really risk reduction, risk reduction, but it's the ability to see the breast cancer right. earlier right. and decrease in cysts of the breast and heart disease somewhere right. in the future. Sure. Then I looked at the mechanism of action and there was nothing in that study that told me how vitamin E caused right. heart disease. And it turns out it was people taking 10 times the normal dose and that's, you shouldn't be doing that. You should take the dose that's recommended. So that study then took all of my patients, they all got scared and they all went off vitamin E and they all got fibrocyst again and it was very hard to diagnose any breast cancer for them. So then then we now have st- we now have ability to look at your genetics and decide what well, and what, that's the thing. The, what's your genetic risk for breast cancer and heart disease? Well, that's one thing. I mean, it's but not the other a one thing size is fits all. That you have a genetic you have a genetic uh, architectural plan for the for the um, supplements or the small like the small things in your diet mm-hmm. that you need that you can't possibly replace by eating. So, I I had, have a genetic test that I do in my office for people dieting or who just want to know what kind of diet is the best. Well, for them. you make a point. And we hang on just a second, and we've got. We can tell if you need vitamin E, vitamin A, vitamin C. I mean, do you have the risk? If you don't take those, are, that means you'll be getting sick. Right. So my last, the end of the story is, so I do this on a friend of my daughter's. My daughter's a physician. And it turns out that he needs vitamin E. So I say, you need vitamin E. And I send him the report. She goes crazy. It's going to cause heart disease. It's, I mean, she's a doctor. Yeah. But she never... She, she read that one report, freaked her out, right. which it would freak anybody out. And then she thinks I'm going to give her friend Something that's heart kill disease. Him. Yeah. Well, first of all, that's that's not substantiated by anything currently. You do like this friend. Uh, you wouldn't yeah, actually I, try to give him. No, I really, really like this friend. <laughs> and and I really want him to be healthy. That was the whole point. Right. right. So, um, but mine says I need more vitamin E. I take vitamin E. I mean... Because my mother in law be feeding me vitamin E by the gallon. I know, but it's not good yeah. by the gallon. I know. There's, that's that's the why she'd is, be doing it. <laughs> yeah, she would be. She'd be. So, so vitamin E, and just let me back this up. Vitamin E is a vitamin that is not water soluble. It is oil soluble. It's an oil. So anything that looks like an oil in a vitamin capsule is usually oil based. They can collect in your body. So you shouldn't overdose on this. Right. Other vitamins that are tablets that are water soluble, they you just pee them back out. So you're wasting your money right. if you take too much, but you aren't going to have secondary side effects from having too much. So that's my story about yeah, Dr. Nancy one, Snyderman study, says that vitamin, one study, one study. Multivitamins are just an expensive form of pee. Well, I don't believe that. I don't think well, that's – I don't believe that, and I haven't seen that, and I take a lot of vitamins. Well, and let's go back to that. And I think that they made me feel that, better, but in the right dose. Right. So – one of the things you regularly tell people is that they should eat, be eating dark green vegetables, right? Like, like kale and spinach and, yeah, and stuff. Everything that's in but folic they acid. can't eat enough. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to eat like you know two bales of kale yeah. to get the benefit that you can get from folic a vitamin acid, pill. Methyl methylated B, B vitamins. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you can't eat enough of that stuff. That's uh, true. To get the benefit that you need, so. So we've got we've gone to vitamins, but I just was trying to make the point that the studies, okay, studies change over time, and and at, if you've lived long enough, you've seen everything. Like, what drink a lot of water? That's great. Drink too much water, you can kill yourself. Right. Drink. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't drink coffee. Drink coffee. Don't yeah, drink milk. Drink. That's milk. That's right. I mean, we've changed. Have a the, glass of wine a day. The don't recommendations be for pregnant people yeah. so much. It used to be eat a lot of fish, and now we're like, uh oh, mercury's in fish. But <laughs> I mean. Then, then we started supplementing them with fish oil that was mercury mercury free. So we've come to a to a to a um, an accommodation. But when you look, at, I guess we're talking about studies, but we're also talking about how you should view studies and never take a headline and and say I'm not doing this anymore. Just that's what journalists live off. So, of. so one <laughs> of the things I'm learning today from your conversation is that even physicians can fall subject to headline absorption right. or headline misinterpretation. Because they're busy. In part because they are so busy, and it's not their specialty area. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I, We read these studies. We get the studies mm-hmm. and we read them, and there are lots of uh, data about variables and their statistical manipulations of the variables. And, I, and I, in this article that Dr. Uh, that Dr. Morgan Thaler quotes, mm-hmm. 
there is a reference to a Pearson product mm -hmm. uh, in a calculation. Mm -hmm. And I remember from taking statistics 30-odd oh, years ago, now I know why the I Pearson it. product moment corollary, which is an internal comparison of data against data mm -hmm. within a test. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember having to learn how to do that. So when I read that, I have a vague sense of what that means. It's an mm -hmm. internal consistency measure, but nobody else is going to know I that. I took that off my hard drive a long time exactly, ago. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and so I mean, what we tend to he's do brilliant. is this read, man is brilliant. <laughs> we read the headline, and then we read the conclusion. And mm -hmm. if you go back to Dr. Cates, his conclusion is, be careful. Consider risks and benefits. Yeah, I'm not uh, trying to fry Dr. Cates. I'm no, using not him at all. As an example, and, and we tend to actually we're trying to fry the headline writer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, warnings about testosterone. It's not safe. That's and, simply and not true. And tell you, reassure you that men that are taking testosterone, it is helping you in hundreds of ways, right. and the risk is very very low. And if you want more information on that specific issue. Dr. Morgan Thaler has, to me, the Sentinel book. Yeah. I mean, I give it to my male patients yes. because who are questioning this, called Testosterone for Life. And I mean, for such a brilliant man to write a book that everyone can understand, I mean, I just, I think that's, that's the true sign of brilliance, to be able to be so smart and to do all this research and then to make it so that the common person can read it. This is what I think you should read if you want to make an opinion he metabolizes all of the studies and shows you why this is okay for you. So I don't want you to run by fear. I, I'm so I'm so sad that we we give fear people salt. Yeah, but we give people whiplash by right. yanking them around. It's yes. like you're being manipulated by all of these fearful things. And if you're in fear, finally, if you have too much fear, you're immobilized and you're not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not healthy. And the fear itself isn't healthy. Yeah. So we want you to take a deep breath and relax. And if you have a question about testosterone for men, we've already told you that we've looked at the studies, we've read them, and the one study everybody's talking about, and even those silly plaintiff lawyers are talking about, even in the Journal of Endocrine Today, mm -hmm. they say, this is probably going to be retracted, so everybody just calm down. Right, yeah. So, I mean, that's endocrinologists. Morgan Thaler's a urologist. I mean... This yeah. is, is going across the span of all of the different types of physicians. So just please relax. We really do read all the studies. We read the abstract. We read the inside of it. We, and I don't understand some of the statistics, but he explains it to me. <laughs> well, what I, case, what I tell her is what I learned in school, which is figures never lie, but liars always figure. So you can take a set of data and you can manipulate it to get a conclusion know, that's, that's preordained. Uh, so... Talk to your physician. Presumptively, you have a physician that you have a relationship with, that you trust, and they know you and your health. So talk to your physician and ask them, have you read this stuff or have you just read the headlines? I mean, did you really have time to look at the research or did you read the headlines in the JAMA article and the, and the one paragraph summary at the beginning and make a conclusion? Now, they may not give you a straight answer to that, but hopefully if you nudge them, <laughs> they, if they haven't read it, they'll go back and read it, it because it's relevant. And you have a right to make an informed decision, always, which is what we promote consistently. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-993. 0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.